Good morning. <coughs> and welcome to this meditation. What is it? Long workshop. <laughs> Normally it is a course of two or three sessions, but we will do it in one morning or we'll try at least. <coughs> um, we will do different uh, exercises, meditation exercises. Um, but in between, we will also have time to interact, discuss, ask questions. And there will also be some um, um, theory part of it. Mm. The, the knowledge behind meditation, the technique of meditation, what are the ideas. So it, will, it is meant to be very experiential, but at the same time also to understand deeper what is meditation, how to meditate, what is the bigger idea behind meditation also. Yes? But the idea is that after this morning, you will have an idea what to do in meditation. That doesn't mean you will be expert, <laughs> because expert you become by practicing yourself mm -hmm. and experimenting yourself. But at least to give you some tools and some exercises to get you started. It will not go in the depth and the depth and the depth of spiritual knowledge. That is further on if you would want to pursue that, there are courses to follow up with that. But this is just mainly the focus on meditation and the practice of meditation, as uh, is taught by Raj Yoga, knowledge of the Brahma Kumaris. Yes? So, okay, we will just start with a light relaxation. Uh, <coughs> just for a moment. We bring all our attention here in this present moment. Whatever happened, whatever happened yesterday, what will come, we just let it go and just bring all our attention here in this moment. Become aware of the position of the body. Become aware of how the body breathes in and breathes out. And we become aware of <coughs> the different muscles, sensations, the heartbeat. Aware of the atmosphere in this room. But also we become aware of the one who is experiencing all of this, the inner self. the one sitting behind the eyes, looking through the eyes, the being of consciousness. And just we hold for a moment this clarity, this awareness, that there is this body and the external world and the inner being, the conscient, living, thinking, experiencer, invisible, 
sitting behind the eyes. And we hold the image of a tiny star, a being of light. We just <coughs> keep it in the mind, this clarity, tiny star, inner being, and the outer world. The real self is like a presence the one who is aware the one who is experiencing everything light And as we gradually end this exercise, we stay with this kind of introverted awareness. Of the self as a being of light. Thank you. Okay, in this in this um, in this life we can go through life in a kind of what would be the word automatic mode we can go through life without being um, aware without being fully conscious even we can go through this life just following the patterns of the crowd. <laughs> we can go through this life just following whoever and whatever is around us without ever really making conscious choices, without ever really being fully consciously aware 
of who we are and what life is all about. And uh, meditation is about coming out of that kind of, uh, how would you call that state? Unaware state? <laughs> Trapped state? Or hurt, hurt men uh, mentality? And not to uh, make us feel bad or anybody feel bad, but we easily just follow. No, we we are born. We are born in a certain context, and you just do what you have seen done, and what they tell you to do, and how they tell you to do. And if you don't like it, then you do what others are telling you <laughs> to do, or what others show you to do. And so our sense of self and our sense of self awareness is much of the time based on on others and what others do and what we're being told. And um, our sense of life itself and what life means and what success means and what love means is many times just defined by our surroundings. Yeah. And people in other surroundings may have other ideas even. <laughs> <laughs> because their context or their culture or their belief systems are different. Now, the practice of meditation is to help you be more aware of the real self and also to be more conscious that you have choices, how to position yourself in life, how to see life, who am I truly? Who is that? And so, <coughs> just a simple sketch to help us uh, in be more clear of this bigger map, you could say, of who am I and what is life all about. There is this word. Another one, one moment. When we think of ourselves, many times we think of ourselves in this form, no? more or less. I don't know how to draw very well <laughs> the sketch. When we say I, or when we say me, or when we think of ourselves, we many times, first of all, think of our physical form, no? the body. We can draw a bit more details, but more or less. Uh, the physical form. <coughs> and around the physical form, there are many things. There are others, there are objects, an apartment or a house, there is a job maybe, or an education or a culture, there are friends and relatives, there are dollars, there is a country, there are maybe hobbies or entertainment and your preferences. Many times we use the word I for this, isn't it? <coughs> now, when you embark on a spiritual journey, you ask yourself the question, is this really I? And if it is, is this all? Is this the only thing? Is there something more? And so, <coughs> 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 
we have this beautiful word, human being. No? And this word indicates two things, human and being. Now, what is this being? Who is this being? What is this being? When you look at this, who or what is this being? Mm, our nature? Mm. Inner self? Awareness? Very good. The one who is aware. No, if you just look at this body, body. No, there is a corpse is also a body. But what is the difference between a corpse and a living human being? No, that is the being. The being, the inner being, the soul, awareness, consciousness, that is not there in a corpse. Now, the one who says, I want to learn to meditate, is not the body. It is the inner being, the being of consciousness, the being of awareness, the being who has the capacity to think and remember and experience. That being says, I want to meditate. That corpse doesn't say, I want to meditate. <laughs> and so the difference between a living being, a living human or a corpse, is this living being, the one who is that energy of consciousness. And we use the image of a star to indicate that being. And that being <coughs> is for a temporary period within the body. These eyes do not see by themselves. These eyes are like windows for the one who is seeing through these eyes and making sense of this information coming through the eyes. It is the being who listens through the ears and tries to make sense of the information coming through the ears. This mouth doesn't speak by itself. It is the inner being that uses the mouth to convey information or, or sound, or sometimes no information, just making noise. <laughs> but it is the being who uses the mouth. Make sense? So it's like the, the body is like a car, a vehicle. But the one using the car, the one making sense of the information coming in, is this being. Now the being, or the soul, there are many names. Soul, inner being, being of consciousness is invisible. The body is visible, but the inner being is not visible, invisible. Now, if you use the word I, for what should you use that word, actually? Yeah. The real self is this inner being. If you sit in a car, if you sit in a car, when you say I, do you mean the car? You mean the driver in the car, isn't it? <laughs> Although we sometimes say, oh, I'm parking there. <laughs> I am parked there. We identify with the car, but we are not the car. We know that in, in, in that context. You, 
you're using a shoe, but you are not the shoe. Hmm? The same way, the being is using this vehicle, but I am not this vehicle. But we are, as we do with the car, say you go and sit in a car and you drive a car. What happens with us when we are driving a car, we bought a car, we own a car, and we drive all over with it? What happens with us inside, internally? What happens in our relationship with the car? We start to believe this is my car. We start to believe this car is part of me. And then someone criticizes the car. <laughs> what happened? We feel bad. Somebody praises the car. We feel elated. <laughs> but that is the car and the driver is separate. There was a time you didn't know about the car. And there will come a time that that car breaks down. You can't use it anymore. And you either you sell it or it whatever goes to the dump yard. But you are still there, the driver, isn't it? In the same way here also, this body is like a car. But we have become so identified with it that we take anything that happens to this personal. So someone say, oh, your nose is beautiful. And you think, oh. Someone say, oh, your ears are too big and the hair is ugly. And you feel <laughs> bad. Because we identify with it. No? There is a beginning to this car. And there is an end to this car. But just like that physical car, the beginning and the end of that car doesn't mean the beginning and the end of the driver in the same way here too. The beginning of this car and the end of this car doesn't mean the beginning and the end of the being. So meditation is becoming more aware of this. And understanding this this car as a very valuable vehicle, but not me. The real self, the driver, is this invisible star-like being, you could say. And that being is immortal. It's also becoming invisible. <laughs> As opposed to the body, the body is mortal. Body is mortal. And mortal just means it will change. It will end. There's a beginning, there's birth, and there is death. For this body, there is, a, how do we call it, expiry date of the body. There is no expiry date for the soul. At least the, this expiry date of this doesn't mean the expiry date of this. It's like a car. Just get out of the car. You may get another car. You may get no car. You just stay, walk on foot, whatever. But the end of that car doesn't mean the end of the driver. To realize this, to deeply realize this, to internalize this, to experience this, is meditation. Now, much of our anxiety today, much of our... Uh, um, Fears today are around fear of end and fear of death. Now, 
more we become aware of ourselves as spiritual beings, timeless, endless beings, we feel, what is the feeling that comes? Secure, secure, peace. Very good. Indifferent in terms of, uh, uh, what is the word? Not fluctuating. Yeah, very good. Not fluctuating, which is kind of peace, no? serene, unshakable. Fearless. How would that be? A mind that feels secure. A mind that feels fearless. A mind that experiences peace. Meditation. No, but it comes from... Uh, First of all, kind of stepping back internally, you step back and you become aware. Okay, there is an experiencer. That experiencer actually is me. And this is a vehicle, temporarily. The real self is this beautiful being of light. <coughs> immortal or eternal, immortal or eternal means no beginning and no end. Means the, the, the being of consciousness always existed. But at this moment, what is important to realize is that the end of this doesn't mean the end of this. To really wrap our head around immortality and eternity, that is a further step. But at least our existence doesn't end with the end of this. And much of the anxiety and insecurities today uh, of many of us have to deal with what happens to this. Whilst if we become aware that the real self is not this, and we can come out of those fears and start to explore that mind that experiences these healthy feelings, these secure feelings, these feelings of peace. And more we grasp this, and more we experience this, and the subtlety of this, we will be more able and in a better place to experience and to understand eternity and immortality. Yep. So shall we try? Okay, I will sit there now, and you just concentrate here in front. You don't have to close your eyes for the meditation because the aim is to be able to hold a meditative state of consciousness wherever you are, whatever you do. Okay, you, you sit down for meditation, that is good in the morning, in the evening, but also to be able during the day, be aware of the self as this beautiful being of light. Hmm? So play with it. I'm not saying you have to open your mouth, <laughs> but it, you don't need to close your eyes for meditation. And actually, we we practice meditation as an open-eyed form of meditation. And you can use this image to help you uh, as light. It doesn't have to, but it is a tool to help you. So I will guide the meditation from there, and then we'll take it a step further.
So we take a few moments to step back. And withdraw our attention from the external world. Withdraw the attention from the sense experiences and bodily sensation. and shift away from all the different stories in our head, the different roles. And we become more and more aware of the inner being the experiencer And in the mind, we hold the image of the inner being in the form of a tiny star. We understand the inner being. as a driver and his body as a vehicle The eyes are like windows. And the driver is seated behind the windows. This inner self. The soul is in the car, but behind the windows. And this tiny point of light is like a presence, an invisible presence. The one who is experiencing, the one who makes sense of the colors and the objects and the forms and images. And eyes are like windows. And we are aware of ourselves as driver. Ordinarily, the attention is only on the things outside. But 
that right now we are aware of the outside, but also we are aware of the self. Aware, the inner being, light. Exercise in self-awareness. The driver is also aware of the sounds of wherever the car is right now and the different sounds and objects around. But who is making sense of these sounds? Who is interpreting what it means? It is not the ears, but the driver seated behind the eyes. And we just hold this image of a tiny star. The driver in this body. Living, conscious, self. The driver is not part of the car. The driver is a guest in the car. The driver uses the car, enters the car, and can leave the car. The driver is always secure. The driver is the real self, the soul. And the body is the car. In this case, the real self is this invisible driver who is a guest in this body and has a life beyond the body. The real self is a timeless, invisible being of light, like a star. Using the physical vehicle with appreciation 
and wisdom. And as we continue the journey, we hold on to this higher consciousness, this higher awareness. Of the invisible guest, the invisible driver. Om Shanti. Is it cold? Anyone cold here? Not really, okay. Any thoughts? Feels fresh, very good, very good. Relaxing, very good. Mm-hmm. Very focused. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You feel peaceful? Okay. Any questions or comments or does it make sense? <coughs> It is the being, no? Although the body functions better when there is peace, but it is the being that uh, that has desires even. <laughs> body is like neutral. Yeah, the mind belongs to the being. So, um, just like body has different organs, not to function, the body has heart and lungs and stomach and liver and all the different organs to make the body function. In the same way, you could say the organs of the soul or the being, one of the organs is the mind. And the mind is like a screen on which uh, thoughts are projected. And, and feelings come and and intentions are are part of the what goes on in the mind. But another function of the of the soul or the inner being is the is the intellect. Intellect doesn't mean your IQ, but intellect is your power to discern, your wisdom with which you steer through life your power to make choices and take decisions. And that is also part of the, of the driver. So the driver creates thoughts, thinks, and has feelings, but also the dri- through the mind, and the driver uses the intellect to decide where to go, what to do, what not to do. Turn left, stop. (laughs) That is like the function of the intellect. And all of that is in the being. And this being uses the mind and the intellect to steer the body. Um, 
the brain is separate. No, this brain is is part of the the body no, because in a corpse there is brain, but there is no <coughs> thought process going on anymore. There is no oh I don't want this I will do that. So the brain is like the physical manifestation. So the soul works through the brain. Yes, it's like what you could say. It is like the the steering mechanism. The when we're trying to make do the meditation. Mm -hmm. hmm what to do with that. So when you're meditating, you will find that some thoughts may appear or, uh, or some images from yesterday may pop up. <laughs> or someone you don't want to see, that person comes. <laughs> All those things uh, happen. Um, <coughs> that is where it is useful for every meditation to have a specific topic. Not like with this meditation, we had the topic of driver and the car. That was like the topic. So if you have a topic and you see that your mind, that you get distracted, something comes in the mind, you say, very good, but not now. I'm busy. <laughs> I'm busy now. I'm busy with thinking about the driver and the car. So you just gently go back to your topic. The whole th that is why it's good to have a topic in your meditation. And just come back and say, later. It's a good word, later, not now. <laughs> now, meditation. Later, I'll think of you. And what you may, may find is that by the time meditation finished, you don't even remember. <laughs> <coughs> but what has happened, I, I'm joking, but the, I'm also serious. This is really the method to do it. But um, what happens is for a long time, we have not cultivated the power of our mind. No? For a long time, what goes on in here is all whatever, however, whenever. And um, we have identified with so many things and we have created attachment, attachments with so many things and so many people and so many situations. So where my where where there are lots of attachments, mind is pulled there. So then you say, okay, now I want to meditate. Those attachments say, hello, hello, hello. <laughs> I want you to think of me. <laughs> think of me. <laughs> so they are indications of where my my. Um, dependencies are, or egos, or attachments. But at this moment in time, I don't want to address all of that. I, uh, later, not now. Now I want to become aware again of the real self. And I want to, as if, discover the beauty and the power and the potential of the real self. So like you talk to yourself inside, slowly, gently, with love, but later. Like like clouds, they come and they go. Those thoughts, they come, but you don't hold on to them. Let them go, bye, later, I'll see. And I come back to my topic. Any other?
That is, but that, that those are things that we need to use. You know? Who is creating the thought? I am. So I am in charge of what thought to create. But we have not been aware of this for a very long time. So I, we haven't used this function for a very long time. But you can choose what you think. And when you think, and yeah, excellent. Yeah. And um, <laughs> very good. Excellent. Yeah, very good. <coughs> the other thing that is useful to uh, um, discover or acknowledge or become aware of is that you can only have one thought at a time. They can be very fast, but there's only one at a time. Yeah. So. So it's either a thought of distraction or a thought of uh, whatever the topic is that I want to hold on to. But just play with this. This is also part of the journey of meditation, is learn to play with, with your thoughts and with the different themes. Learn to play with life itself. You become so, what is it? Excellent observation. Yeah, you feel like a victim. It is not in my hands. But no, I am the creator of the thought. And I can steer the thoughts. <coughs> the driver. <laughs> Well, I will give some more examples later uh, during the uh, course. But this is one example, no? becoming aware of the self as a driver. And play with this, the driver. The soul is a driver and this is a car. <laughs> the car. <laughs> Use that that uh, that metaphor. Okay. Any other observations? Hmm. How to remain positive? <laughs> How to keep? positive. <coughs> were you here Thursday? No, you were not here. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, <coughs> it is a little bit outside of the meditation course, but I will quickly refer to it, because everyone wants to know <laughs> these kinds of things, how to remain positive. Um, <coughs> spiritual knowledge says there is, uh, things are not at random. No? Things happen and things in life are there because there is a reason and a wisdom behind. But many times we don't see that reason or we don't see that wisdom. And then we are in a turmoil. <laughs> or we are, uh, what is it, disturbed. Or we are maybe even sad because we cannot see the bigger, bigger picture of things. 
No? And any time when you are able to see the bigger picture of things, you're in a better place, you're in a better position. No? A simple example, if, um, if you don't know how this body functions, <coughs> and if you don't know uh, what is healthy food for the body, and you drink gasoline, <laughs> for example, <laughs> then you are creating problems for yourself. Because you're not understanding what gasoline is for and you're not understanding what this body is for and how to take care of this body. So if you know how this body functions, if you know the bigger picture, you're in a better place for yourself. If you have a map of this building and if you know the bigger picture of this building and that this, bigger, this building it has so many floors and you're on the second floor and you're on Fifth Avenue in Manhattan, if you know the bigger picture, you're in a better place. You are kind of more also internally more relaxed, but you're less likely to get lost. You're less likely to create problems for yourself. <coughs> now, and even if something happens, if you have the bigger picture, you are more easily able to deal with unexpected situations. Or if, if the elevator doesn't work, you know there are two stairs you can take. So you're okay relaxed, you're internally more relaxed and okay with it, even if there are adverse situations or problematic complications are there. You're okay because you see a bigger picture. Now, in life in general, it is the same. There are many things that happen, there are many situations in this big drama of life that goes on. But because we don't see a bigger picture, we are, we are entangled in one or two situations and it traps our mind. And it is not possible for us to remain positive. It is not possible for us to remain uh, calm. It is not possible for us to see the wisdom or the, the, the secret behind that situation. And so to truly remain positive in all kinds of situations, we need to see a bigger picture of life. We need to have a bigger map of life and a bigger understanding of life and how to approach life. And so if there is sadness, if there is negativity, if there is some discomfort or pain or suffering going on, what it just means is we need to see from a different angle. We need to see things from a bigger perspective. And uh, Raj Yoga knowledge says and teaches a spiritual perspective to things. The example we were giving on Thursday, that is why I was asking. Um, in um, <coughs> this difference of perspective, to understand that a little bit. In some places in the world, women take out their front teeth uh, by force. Take it out. You know why? Because in that culture, it is considered beautiful. Big hole here. <laughs> so they take out, they extract the front teeth to make themselves look beautiful. So bigger the gap, more beautiful. In our culture, <laughs> we don't do that <laughs> because we don't consider that to be beautiful. Now, it is just a different perspective. In that culture, gap here is seen as beautiful, in our culture, not. So someone in our culture born with a gap here will feel, I'm ugly. Born in that culture, she will feel, I'm very beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> 
So one, one situation person will suffer, other situation person will be elated. Has nothing to do with the gap itself, but it has to do with the internal perspective and conditioning. In China, uh, in rural China, at least in the past, if uh, someone is born, baby is born, the elders of the village, they get together and they cry. <laughs> <laughs> they cry. Why? Because to their mind, that is the worst thing that can happen to someone, to be born in this world. So there, that is their perspective, that is their belief system. So this is something sad that is happening. Someone gets born in this world. In our culture, what do we do? We have party. Because we feel this is a good thing, this is a great thing. Who is right, who is wrong? No, it's, it's just a matter of perspective. <coughs> in Nepal, in the past at least, when someone dies, they have a party because they feel this is a very good thing. Person is leaving. <laughs> this is a good thing. <laughs> Liberated from this place. <laughs> In our culture, someone dies, we cry endlessly. So the what I'm trying to illustrate is situations are there, things happen. But ha whether we suffer or whether we are happy has to do with our perspective and our belief system about it. Now, what intelligence says, to have a perspective that allows you to be happy always is a perspective that is more sensible to have. And maybe even a perspective that is more closer to truth also. Understand? So uh, this is long answer to your question. <laughs> but I mean, your question is also not an easy, <laughs> simple question. How to come out of negativity, it just means maybe we need to create a broader perspective, a different perspective, look at it from a different angle, hmm? and explore and what we call higher consciousness, hmm? a perspective from the soul as opposed to from this human limited perspective. And if we do that, then it is possible to be free from negativity. If we do that, it is possible to be free from sorrow. But it requires st a certain study in terms of getting familiar with a different perspective. It requires practice to open up ourselves. And it requires a certain will and determination to come out of the negativity. Because sometimes we are also attached to suffering. No? Anyone here attached to suffering? <laughs> no, we kind of are. We will say no, but uh, in, so, may, for example, in this world, everyone knows smoking is not right, but still people smoke. Many of us know which kind of food is not right, but we still eat it. <laughs> so we have these tendencies within us that undermine ourselves and undermine our peace and joy. So to come out of that is uh, a higher aim for, for a spiritual student. But at least the beginning steps of meditation, we can start mastering 
and we'll see where it leads us. Yeah. Okay. Does it make sense? <coughs> okay. Okay. Any other thoughts? It is good not to judge or condemn, but um, it is good to discern, you know, and choose quality thoughts, yeah. but not keep myself trapped in a certain vision of myself. That is true. But to uh, to be aware, to acknowledge, but to choose consciously. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> so <coughs> this is a bit clear, no? So the driver and the car, one thing to play with. What is going on here? It's some oil, probably. Another way to um, sketch this is there is the physical dimension and there is the non-physical dimension. <coughs> and in the physical dimension is the world of matter. The word world of the elements, the water, air, um, uh, fire, what else is there? Earth. <laughs> there is the world of change, it is the world of sound, it is the world of time. No, and uh, just to indicate uh, nature and animals. And there's sun and dollars, and there's cell phone, and the world of matter. Yeah. And there's politics and religion and culture and country and race and ethnicity, all of that. This is part of the physical world. And there is the one who is experiencing this who is invisible, mm, the being of consciousness, the being of light, who is using this car mm, to kind of drive through all of this, <laughs> you could say. <laughs> but this, uh, the experiencer or the inner self is invisible. And this, the experiencer belongs to a different dimension. The dimension beyond matter. The dimension beyond sound. The dimension beyond time. The invisible dimension. You cannot perceive this dimension through your sense organs. But we can understand it and experience it through the mind. Now the soul, or the higher being, has come from this non-physical dimension into the physical dimension. And? And? What else? Huh? And returns, yeah. Stays here for a while and then returns to the invisible dimension. Hmm? And so another word that we could use to describe the soul apart from driver, another word that we could use is guest. 
isn't it? A guest means you come and you go, isn't it? You're here now uh, at this level, you have come here and you will go. You're a guest here in a way. Huh? Now what is the speciality of a guest? Yeah, very good. A guest is somewhere temporary. That is one characteristic of a guest. So in this also, the soul is temporary, temporarily here in this body. And the soul is temporarily here in this physical world. We have come to visit. Who doesn't like to visit? Most people like to visit, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> now, why is it that we enjoy visiting? Very good. You, you go for a visit somewhere to have a change of scenery. That is one reason. Why else? What else? Oh, someone is calling you to come and visit, okay. But also, when you go for a visit, you enjoy being there because you don't really have to do anything there, isn't it? You still do, you, you go and relax or you help out, you cooperate, but you know you will go, so fine. Some people do something there or they paint the wall purple or yellow, <laughs> and as long as it is the house of your friend where you're just a guest, you kind of find it amusing, isn't it? Doesn't mean you want your home like that, but when you're there, you, oh, this interesting <laughs> green chairs. <laughs> and you kind of appreciate everything. And you say, well, I think it would be better if it is blue or white, but still you kind of appreciate. You 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 involve, you say something, but you don't get entangled as a guest. That is what is nice. In the consciousness of a guest, you remain free because you know you will go. Isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. You don't get into the heaviness of I and mine and this and that. You're visiting. And you still give your opinion if they are asking or you still get involved, you help and you cooperate, you do the dishes, whatever. But you're not heavy about it because you know you, after a little while I'll be gone, isn't it? That is the beauty of the guest. <laughs> now, in the bigger scheme of things, we are in this world as guests. The only problem is we have forgotten that we are guests. And we have gotten entangled here. And we made everything so important and so big and so attached and such ego and mine and oh, and if it is not there, I can. You're just as a guest. If someone paint purple and yellow, you say, oh, interesting. <laughs> as you go as a guest somewhere and somebody else criticizes the chair, what do you, you say, oh. Okay, that's their opinion, but you don't get all excited about it or upset about it. You're just, okay, that's your, that's your taste or your choice, but why should I get all upset about it? So this guest consciousness makes us free, emotionally free. Whilst we are involved, 
As a guest, you don't go and jump on the chairs and break the chairs. You still behave respectfully. And you help out if you do need to do something and you use it. But you remain free. You can step back. Right? So anytime you want to leave, you can leave. No problem. Understand? Now, this is another topic for your meditation. To play with this word, guest. And with these feelings, explore the feelings of a guest. <coughs> How um, a guest doesn't have uh, unreasonable expectations. And doesn't have any desperations either. Because he knows when you go, I will. If they don't give me something to drink, then I will go home and drink. <laughs> no problem. So, in the bigger scheme of things, from a spiritual perspective, if there is that identity of the self as a spiritual being, as a as a soul, we have come into this world, we have come into this body, and we are here as guests. Hmm? But still, as a guest, you, you behave <laughs> according to the rules, but you don't really get too uh, entangled in it. And as a guest also, you don't misbehave. Because you know if you misbehave, they throw you out. <laughs> they throw you out. So same here. In this world, there are certain dynamics and there are certain rules and there are certain moral structures. So we come in this world and if we want to enjoy and take the best of it as guests, we do. You make some changes here and there if you want to, if not, fine. But you know there is an exit. Now, in this topic of attachments and ego, for example, you come here as a guest, safe at a, this level, at a physical level. You come here in this space as a guest. You enjoy the seat, no? You enjoy the light, you go to the bathroom if you need to, you take some water to drink. <coughs> but do you say my chair? <laughs> do you say this is my chair? No, you don't. As long as you don't forget that you are guest. But we quickly get into this I and mine. Because if you go to the bathroom and someone goes sit on the chair, you say, oh, that was my chair. <laughs> so, so quickly we come out of that mode. And so quickly we get into this attachment mode. Now, the moment we come out of the guest mode and get into the attachment mode, we lose our peace. We lose our security.
ね。そう、contemplate on this。Because the moment you get into attachment, even the attachment is maybe even still deeper. The moment you really, really like something, that is the moment you lose your peace. And so, in the guest mode, you appreciate and you like. You acknowledge, you respect, you use, you love, but you doesn't, you don't get into the bondage. Well, when you get into the bondage, it means my peace depends on it, my happiness depends on it. That is the time that you lose the state of master to. That is opposite of master. <laughs> or dependent mm -hmm. in bondage in jail. So play with this guest, and another word that is kind of related to it is traveler. So the inner being, the real self, the being of consciousness, is a guest, is a traveler in this world. <coughs> invisible traveler. We are invisible travelers in this world. And what does a traveler do? Enjoy. <laughs> And to be. If you use a similarity, who enjoys New York City the most? <laughs> Why? <laughs> Because they are in the travel mindset. They say, "Wow, wow!" We walk past every day, and we <laughs> and they say, "Wow, wow!" Everything, wow, wow. Subway, wow, we complain about the subway all the time. <laughs> they see a double decker, wow, they see a hole in the street, wow, New York City also has holes. <laughs> because they're in the, the journey mindset, and because they know it is temporary, because they know they have a home beyond. Now we have lost that wa mindset. As a humanity, we have forgotten ourselves as beings of consciousness, as travelers, as visitors, as guests. And then everything is a problem. Train is a problem, no train is also a problem, late train is also a problem. Uh, the train is also a problem. Everything becomes like a problem because here is the problem. <laughs> This is where we were saying, we, if you see the bigger picture, Our intellect has become so uh, gross that we can't perceive time anymore properly. No? If if I give you a diamond and I say it is completely yours, completely, completely, completely yours, I'll give you even the papers and sign everything for five minutes. Will you get attached to it? Well, you see, my diamond, look at it, I'm rich now. You won't. Because five minutes you can grasp, this is, not <laughs> what is this. <laughs> But in theory, there's no difference between five minutes or five years or 50 years or even 500 years. It is still temporary. Hmm? But because our intellect has become so gross we 
we, we interpret five years as eternal, but it is not. We interpret 50 years as eternal, but it is not. No, and you see this in children, no? so someone, they, you tell a child, I have chocolate now, but if you wait till next week, I'll give you 50 chocolates, what will he say? A child, three-year-old child. <laughs> Give me, <laughs> next week he doesn't understand next week. You will say, this is a good deal, I will wait. <laughs> I get 50 next week, I don't have a problem. So, but in the bigger scheme of things, this is what has happened to us. We can't perceive time anymore in the bigger sense. And we interpret next year as eternal or five years as eternal. No. So, <coughs> here the aim is to see that bigger picture. No. And even though we, even though we normally don't talk like that with each other, because that is the other thing, there is a bit of a fear no, to talk about certain things. And we don't say certain things. You avoid it in your mind and you vo we avoid it in conversation. But our time on this planet is not eternal. And we all know that. <laughs> we might not like it, but we all know it. So if it is not eternal, it means in the true sense we are guests. We are visitors. We are travelers. So why not embrace this truth that we all know and use it to our advantage? And live in the mindset of the traveler. And enjoy like, we, like they enjoy New York City. <laughs> No, one time, this is a bit funny, I was in, living in the Caribbean at that time, and our house was on a, how do you call that, cul-de-sac? A, a, a closed street, so not true way. So there is no traffic there, only uh, people who live there would come. So the government doesn't pay attention to repair the roads there, so <laughs> huge, huge... Uh, uh, what is it? Um, holes, potholes. And apparently, one was, uh, one was very big on the side of the road, very big pothole and very deep. And apparently some special plants and some special <laughs> flora, fauna started to grow there. So some tourists somehow came there, and they, one of them was a biologist, and he's taking pictures of this pothole. <laughs> Every day he spent his holiday time visiting this pothole, <laughs> investigating what is going on there. And we living there, we are complaining about this thing, and he making some great big discovery. <laughs> and because he's in a different mindset. And we are in a different mindset. <coughs> so, meditation is about shifting your perspective, broadening your perspective, stretch your mind and stretch the capacity of your intellect. And experiment with a different perspective on life. We can see life as a jail. We can see life as a war. We can see life as a, what is it? A, 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 a horrible, <laughs> what is it? Uh, what is it they say? Love hurts and all of those melodrama, <laughs> drama. <laughs> uh, uh, life is a struggle, life is a battle. Why can't we see life as a journey? Play with it. 
and, and on a journey, there are all kinds of situations and all kinds of scenes, and you kind of observe and you clap for some and you say, okay, fine. But you know, you move on, things will pass. Next scene will be there. And whatever situation, it always, if we appreciate variety scenes, it r enriches me. Some moment there is a party, some moment it is more serious, another moment there is a religious lecture, some moment, whatever, the variety scenes. If I appreciate variety scenes, I am richer for it. And I can experience the richness of the journey. And so meditation is about playing with that perspective of invisible traveler, guest. Hmm? So shall we do an exercise again? <coughs> So for the coming few moments, <coughs> we aim to be a bit more attentive on being introvert, Understanding that there is an external dimension, that there is a body. But we understand the inner being, the beam of being of consciousness as a traveler. a visitor in this world, a visitor in this body. And in the eye of the mind, we hold the image of a tiny star the experiencer. The real self is like a presence sitting behind the eyes The invisible traveler is aware that the journey is for a fixed time. The visitor knows this is not this world, we are aware of the world beyond. And we 
experience that perspective of a traveler, that consciousness, that freedom. A state where there is nothing to complain. The invisible traveler doesn't own anything. Every moment is an extra gift. Every interaction is an extra gift. The traveler enjoys the journey. Doesn't get attached or desperate about anything. It is extra. For a moment, I just reflect deeply, truly. I, the soul, am a traveler. Through time, through space, invisible being, pure light. secure Situations come, situations go, interactions come, interactions go. But the being of consciousness travels on. And remains forever a being of light. That light, that higher being, soul is the real self. Innately peaceful, 
innately free, innately pure. Thank you. So we'll take a little break now. Yeah. So you can walk around. If you want something warm to drink, please let us know because our cooler is out of order. So we will have to heat up some uh, water. And then we will do, we'll take maybe 15, 20 minutes break. You can go out if you want to, but we will start again. And then we will do one more hour with some more exercises and some more ideas. And then there will be little lunch for everyone. So just an idea for the rest of the day. But now, shall we say 20 minutes? 20 minutes break. Okay. I will also open the windows so if you, so that we can get some fresh <laughs> air in. Yeah. And there will be some, what is it? snack at the back.
Okay, we will start again. We will start again with a practice, meditation practice. We keep the body comfortable and relaxed. And we let the thoughts of everyday life exit the stage of the mind. With the eye of the mind, we aim to see the bigger picture. As an observer, a being of light, watch the body and the scenes around the body as if from a distance. As if watching from beyond. The higher being, the real I is as if in a space of light and silence. And the body and the physical world are in the far distance below. With the mind's eye, we see a tiny sparkling star surrounded by light and silence that sparkling light is the real eye in a dimension of silence and beautiful, soothing light. Using the power to concentrate, we focus on this mental image of a tiny star, pure, 
subtle, silent light. Thoughts and feelings are concentrated on this beautiful star. We fill the screen of our mind with this image of the star of light. An unearthly being made of subtle, serene light. This being is eternal, imperishable, immortal, timeless. A beautiful being that looks like a star. With his invisible to the human eye, but can be perceived through the mind. A being so selfless, so innocent. So clean, childlike, godlike, peaceful, silent, gentle. We do not allow our thoughts to be distracted by sounds or movement in the physical world. We totally concentrate on this image on the screen of our mind. And gently, we allow the feelings to emerge. A sense of feeling safe. And so still. Of deep relaxation and peace. Nothing to fear. Free. Peaceful. Just silent. This being is eternal, this 
the real I cannot die. Grasping eternity and immortality as a reality emerges confidence and frees us from debilitating emotions. Free. Free from fear. Free from anxiety. It gives such inner strength. Such calm. How sweet this otherworldly peace. A feeling of wonder and amazement fills the heart. And the mind completely surrenders to the experience. Totally immersed in those highest feelings of eternity, of light, of total stillness. Traces of doubts and inhibitions fade away. All resistance vanishes. And as we gently Finish this exercise. We aim to keep these higher thoughts and feelings in the mind. Do not allow mundane thoughts to substitute this pleasant and peaceful atmosphere in the inner world. With this aim, we consciously choose to become aware again of the external world.
want to say anything or share anything or ask? Everyone is quiet. <laughs> Worry free. Worry free. All we can do is offer, <coughs> and then it is up to each one what they take from it, want with it, and that's fine also. <laughs> no more questions. <laughs> It is not <coughs> not necessarily that we have to see a light. No, I don't see any light, <laughs> and I don't try also. But uh, when we use the word "see," uh, in English also they say "I see" when they mean "I understand." Hmm? So it is all with the eye of the mind. You could say, "You see." the real self is invisible anyway. You know, the soul is invisible, but if you want to use an image, then you use this image. Mm. And you can see, like for example, if I tell you your bedroom, in your mind you get an image no? of, of the bedroom. But it's not that you're seeing the bedroom. So in the same way, many of us are very visual oriented. So we need kind of a certain image. <coughs> so although the, the consciousness is not physical, not tangible, not visible even, but if you want to use an image, then this is the image that is suggested to use. Hmm? But it's not like I'm seeing some light <laughs> <coughs> but it helps as a tool mm. any other thoughts <coughs> good So there are a few 
topics that we have already discovered that you could use in your meditation. The driver in the car, the guest, the visitor or the traveler. <coughs> but also just this understanding that there is a physical dimension and there is a non-physical dimension. Just to reflect a bit more on that is also one topic of meditation. Because at this moment in time, our attention and our mind is trapped here for many of us. All our thoughts and feelings are all the time only on this, or maybe not even all of it, just wanting. Dollars, 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 dollars. Well, I have a friend who, <laughs> I have a friend, <laughs> someone identifying. <laughs> I have a friend who tells me she, all the time, she is either eating or thinking about eating or preparing to eat <laughs> or thinking about what to prepare to eat. <laughs> So the, the whole life goes on around eating. <laughs> so even if she works, it's because she gets money to think what to buy with food to buy with the money. And I mean, fine. But there is much more. We are as if depriving ourselves from many other things that are there. <laughs> And at this moment in time, our mind is kind of fixated here. But at the same time, um, deeper inside, there is a longing for something more refined, something more uh, lasting, something more solidly peaceful, or a certain harmony, or a certain uh, wisdom, maybe even, or security. And the thing is, we're looking for that here. We're looking for it in a temporary world. <coughs> and a changing world. Now, if we are looking for peace, or if we are looking for security in a temporary and changing scenario, we will never find it. <laughs> and so to use the power of our mind and intellect to grasp a bigger perspective so that we can also experience more refined feelings that we are longing for. That is the, the what is it, the aim? The only disadvantage of this you know what is the disadvantage of this? No one can do it for you. <laughs> and we live in a world where we want everything <laughs> ready made, <laughs> done by someone else and I am and that is not the case in this um arena. We have to refine our own understandings. We do have to do our own experimentations, our own explorations. And we ourselves have to be convinced about these things. And no one can do that for me. But on top of that, we also have some little influences from our own conditioned ideas. And we are sometimes influenced by what others say. You know? So for example, when I started to meditate, <coughs> my friends thought I was going a little bit. <laughs> In my language, they say kirvit. <laughs> you know, that I was going a bit crazy. And uh <coughs> I was getting up early morning to meditate, and I was not interested anymore in going out and late night going out and 
whatever. I thought that's fine, but I have done that and it didn't really give me any. Let me try for a while this. <coughs> so, but that pressure is there uh, from uh, uh, public opinion, social pressures, what your family will say. So I came home one day and I um, I had decided to experiment with different food habits and, and experiment with a vegetarian lifestyle. So my father said, what? You have become a rabbit now? <laughs> and he kind of pressured me and I said, what is the problem? You eat what you want to eat, <laughs> but why? But there is a bit of this pressure. So in your journey, in your spiritual journey, know that there will be opposition or some comments or even criticism maybe or whatever. But it is your journey and it is your life. You know, and you have a right to explore and experiment what makes you feel good. <coughs> and uh, um, or someone will say, this is not scientific. Hundred years ago, they used to say, this is not in the Bible. So, <laughs> even if it is not scientific, doesn't mean doesn't uh, uh, and uh, doesn't exist. Science has its limitations. It is developed by studying the physical dimension, and it does a good job at that. But science doesn't claim that it knows anything beyond physical. And if they claim that, it means they are themselves not clear. What are they studying? No? <coughs> so understand that there will be resistance from inside because our old habits, our old belief systems have the tendency to pull us. No? But also there will be some comments <laughs> from others may be there. But you, on your own journey, find out what works for you. Explore it, experiment with it, and see how you feel about it. But know beforehand. Now, one way to describe this journey and self <coughs> in, a, in a kind of light-hearted uh, what is it, caricature way, is inside there is a little angel sitting there. Hmm? But there's also a little devil sitting there. And this little devil sometimes not so little. <laughs> and so this little angel says, I want to meditate, I want to learn. And this devil says, what? <laughs> Why? <laughs> What's wrong with you? <laughs> So we are kind of have to overcome these tendencies that pull us down, these tendencies that keep us in the inert or in the, uh, the maybe not even negative, but just lazy kind of dullness mode. Because, because this angel is the real you. And this little devil is acquired. It has just grown and, and like a parasite, gone and sit there and occupy the whole space. And there is a beautiful story that illustrates this uh, dynamics. There was an eagle egg that got mixed with the chicken's egg. And mother chicken is very big hearted, so she breeds all the chicken, all the eggs, and these chicks hatch, and she uh, is mother to all these little chicks, and she teaches them how to be good chicken. And they have to say, cook, 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 and scratch around the yard, look for worms and grains, and they have to sleep in the chicken coop, be good chicken. <coughs> so one day, one is walking in the yard. And he sees a big shadow. And he looks up and he sees a big bird flying. 
And he asked his brother, what is that? And the brother said, that is the eagle, condor, the king of the birds. He can fly, he plays with the clouds, he sees the ocean, goes over the mountains, king. So this little one says, I also want to fly. So his brother says, no, 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 we are chicken. So, aren't we birds? Yes, but we are birds of the ground. We cannot fly. Come, come, come. We have to look for grains and worms. So he looks up. But he listened to his brother, so he goes. Next day again, in the yard, big shadow, this majestic bird. And he's fascinated, so he thinks, I'm going to try. So he flaps his wings. And he goes up, but he has no practice, so he comes down, he goes up, he comes down, and his brother comes and sees him, and he says, hey, dummy, did I tell you, <laughs> we are chicken, what are you doing, come, we have to go look for grains and worms, we are chicken, put your feet on the ground, leave this nonsense, come, so he looks at the bird, he looks at his brother, he looks at the bird, he looks at his brother, he says, I'm chicken. I cannot fly. So he goes with his brother, walks with his brother. He lives with his brother and family and chicken. And he lives like a chicken. He thinks like a chicken. He feels like a chicken. He sleeps with the chicken. He lives like a chicken. But he was the condor egg, the eagle's egg. <coughs> And I like this story because it reminds me of our own story. We are condor eggs. But we make one mistake. What is that one mistake? <laughs> we listen to chicken. <laughs> and there are many chicken out there, but there are many chicken in here also. Because no matter what outside says, if this says you are chicken, then you will live like a chicken. <coughs> Meditation is about discovering the eagle that you are. Discovering the angel that you are. Meditation is about acknowledging and exploring again that higher nature, that higher potential that is there. But for that, we have to be beyond the chicken, <laughs> chicken consciousness and chicken awareness and chicken world. Now, and the thing about this is, is the a chicken doesn't have choice. Chicken has to live the life of a chicken. Condor can be in the sky and can be on the earth. And be with chicken, play with chicken, but also fly when he wants to. But the condor who is convinced he is chicken also doesn't have choice. It just will be a awkward chicken. <laughs> uh, and the condor, condor who believes he is a chicken can do his best to be a good chicken. And do his best to be king of the chicken. Can go the golden chicken coo. Even two chicken golden chicken <laughs> coo or three. <laughs> but he will still experience the life of the chicken. And deprive himself of the sky. And so... <coughs> Does it make sense, this uh, kind of metaphor? Meditation is acknowledging the chicken reality, but also acknowledging the potential to fly and to explore the sky. And then come and play the game. <coughs> And so this is a bit of a metaphor for the guest and the traveler. The, the 
condor or the eagle or the chicken. Now what spiritual knowledge says is <coughs> <coughs> you are innately that angelic being. We just have forgotten. And we're looking for those experiences at this level. And some of these experiences are very pleasant and nice, but they are at the most temporary. Hmm? Everything here has a beginning and has an end. So to look for security in a changing world, it will not be there. But if we approach it in this consciousness of visitor, consciousness of eagle, then we can play here and be here. But we know we have come and we will go again. And so another step in meditation is explore in your mind the world beyond, the dimension beyond. And one way to make it easier for us is it, this, this dimension, different dimension, is called home. Home of souls. Home of the higher beings. Home of the non-physical beings. And it is a dimension of silence. It is a dimension of light. It is a dimension without, beyond change. It is a dimension of consciousness. So it is an awareness where we are just aware of being a being of consciousness and experiencing the innate, the original experience of peace, of purity, of freedom, of light before we entered the physical world. And that is a state where we will go back to when we leave the physical world again. And to remember as if that consciousness, when we are free from the entanglements and the bondages at this level, home. And the experiences of uh, stillness, of peace, of pure being, of pure existing, of light, of freedom, of belonging, of respect, a feeling of a, uh, a joy that is beyond sense. Um, and a deeper feeling of love, because all belong to this home. So home is home because it is home of family. So all souls belong there. And we are all souls, uh, we are all brothers as souls, a family. Now at the physical level, bodily level, there is difference. There is male and female, there are different races and ethnic backgrounds and cultures. But this concept of universal brotherhood is because we are all souls, family of souls. So the atmosphere in the home is one of belonging, of family, of purity, of peace, but at a non-physical level. So spiritual knowledge says we have all come from there. We have come to travel and at the end of the journey we will all go back home. So this is another aspect of the bigger picture. If there is this awareness of the bigger picture, 
And if we live in this pers with this perspective, deeper inside there are feelings of brotherhood, feelings of brotherly love for everyone. And there's feeling of connectedness, a feeling of bonding with everyone, regardless of the uh, car, <laughs> regardless of the condition of the car. <coughs> and this is a, a, a different, um, what is it, experience that humanity actually is looking for also. In the world today, there is so much of conflict and difference of opinion and hatred and war going on because that deeper sense of connectedness is not there. And if that deeper sense of connectedness at a spiritual level would be there, I would not condemn or hate because of external differences. Because at a deeper level, I would feel we are all souls and brothers. So this concept of universal brotherhood actually is based on a spiritual principle. Because physically, we are not brothers. I have different parents, I have different culture, different country different people, different context in which I was born, different language. At the physical level, we are not brothers, but as beings of consciousness. It's a different story. So just kind of try and grasp, if I walk down Fifth Avenue, with this feeling of what we call body consciousness, bodily awareness. I am this, you are that. <laughs> or if you walk down Fifth Avenue in the consciousness, we are all souls, spiritual travelers, and we have come from the same home. We are here all having different experiences, different cars, but behind there are all souls, brothers. What would be the difference in one consciousness or in the other consciousness? So this is another uh, kind of uh, next area of exploring and experimenting in meditation. The traveler has a home, and the traveler has come from a home, and the traveler will go back home. And the traveler has fellow travelers, family. And that's why in the beginning when we were talking meditation, um, open-eyed meditation, <coughs> There is this saying, no? eyes are the windows of the soul. So you keep your eyes open <laughs> to see the other also as soul. Understand the self as an invisible traveler and acknowledge and see the invisible travelers. And it's such a beautiful feeling. <coughs> Any comments? Mm. Um. As an eagle, fully aware of eagle, will come here to give, will come here to serve, will come here to share, will come here to help others wake up to their eagle consciousness. 
So how much will be dependent on how much I have to give <laughs> and on how much there is need to give. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so in that case is better to lose, sorry. <laughs> yeah. No. The uh, no. Very good question. Um, the aim is not to stop working or to uh, uh, withdraw from family life or to go sit in a cave in the Catskill Mountains <laughs> and just meditate all day. <laughs> uh, um, that is not the aim. No, the the aim is to live actively, but from higher consciousness, uh, or whilst exploring higher consciousness. And so, uh, for myself, uh, uh, I have, during every day, there is time that I dedicate for meditation. And there is time that I dedicate for my spiritual studies. And that time is early in the morning. Because at 8 o'clock, everything else starts. But then when everything else starts, it is my time to practice and to play with what I did in the morning. So it is, um, I don't feel that there is, um, how to say, I have to stop doing all those things. I I clean, I <laughs> cook, <laughs> I do groceries, I go, I used to work uh, for a salary full time, and now this is kind of my work also. No? So I, there is an active physical life at this level, but internally there is a practice going on. And internally there is a shift of perspective. And my actions now are not infused by this ego consciousness or attachment consciousness or fear consciousness. But the actions now are promoted from that higher consciousness. Did I say that right? Yeah, are, are kind of. And uh, of playing the game, of serving, of sharing. I don't know if that helps. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> no, because there is uh, uh, in there are religious traditions where the path of isolation is is uh, promoted, or the part of the path of renunciation of actions, renunciation of family, renunciation of job. That is not what Raj Yoga is. Uh, promoting. Actually, it is the path of action, but from higher consciousness instead of from lower consciousness. Now, so, for example, I can work because I am uh, what looking for some sense of uh, uh, what is it? A purpose in work, or I I work because I want money. I work because I want position and name and fame. 
I want I work because I want to feel that I am important and I am good because of work. Or I can feel worthy. I can feel and experience the angelic part of the self. And then work becomes a tool to interact with others. Work becomes a tool to serve. Work becomes a tool to share with others at a deeper level. Work becomes a tool to feel bond with everyone else. And okay, there will be salary, and okay, there will be whatever else is there, which is useful, but that is then not the purpose. And so if there is, if there is position and name and fame, fine. But if there's not, that's also fine. Soul is free internally. That doesn't become the purpose for my working. And one time, uh, um, a good friend came to do the course, the Raj Yoga course. And um, he said, Rona, but if I do like that, he's a, he was the owner of a pharmaceutical company in the Dominican Republic. A big company, big, uh, like 250 employers, so big uh, not major, but big enough for a country like that. And uh, he said, if I do what you're saying, then I will stop working. <laughs> he says, because I, in my work, I am out there to make the competition look bad. Mm -hmm. It is like with swimming with shark. All the time I have to compete, and all the time I have to convince everybody else that my my Competitors are useless, and that my product is the best. If I do what you are saying, then I will stop working. <laughs> I will not want to be in that kind of environment anymore, because I have to be desiring and wanting and wanting and wanting all the time. And he's describing how he feels. He's describing the internal dynamics of he's always agitated, he's always stressed, he's always a bit scared, and always following what is the competition doing. So he said, well, that is one kind of life. And, uh, but he can also go to work. So he said, but the other way, other consciousness, to go to work is providing a service for the community. You will do your best equally, maybe more. You will use all your skills. You will use all your wisdom. But you're not out there to defeat the competition. You are out there to provide the best that you can. Does it help? Yeah. <coughs> And your internal positioning is different. Now, in this world, when they do studies you know, into happiness, this is a fascinating new area in psychology, positive psychology, and the study of the science of happiness. When they study factors that make people happy, <laughs> One of the things, th the qualities that people who are content and happy, one of the qualities that they possess is that they have an attitude to give instead of an attitude to take or complain. That is the third <laughs> option. <laughs> well, there are three kinds of uh, attitudes people have. They are looking how to cooperate or to give. They are looking how to take. Or they complain about everything. Nothing is good. Now what they have seen is those who are having that attitude of cooperation, those who are having that attitude of serving, of wanting to contribute, wanting to give, those are people who are most happy, regardless of life's challenges regardless of opposition. 
So, and meditation is about grasping that that state of fullness, inner fullness, inner wholeness. And from there, you come into action to give, not to beg or to take, but to give. But the, we, we can understand this. Now, who are more happy, those who are giving or those who are begging? <laughs> we all like giving no? in that deeper insight. Uh, this whole tradition around gifts is because of that. But experiment with this. And you can do simple experiments with that. Um, for example, if you're in the train and it is full, someone is there and you give your seat to someone else, how do you feel about yourself inside? Or you walk on the, and, the, and you, you the, the garbage that is there, you pick it up and you put it in the bin. It, these are simple actions, but there is a deeper sense of... of, of hmm? Yeah, belonging and also a sense of self-respect. Hmm? <coughs> if you can help someone smile, it makes you feel good. Even if it is not last thing, but still you did something. And these are just simple, simple things. If we position ourselves in life like that, how much better we would feel about ourselves. But And that potential is there. We have just lost touch of that. Any thought? No, but it's very good. No, we have become a bit zombie-like. No. <laughs> I'm not so trying to, uh, not to say uh, defame anyone, but we are in that zombie-like mode, and life just passes by. You know, we don't have to. <coughs> Okay, some uh, final uh, um, story. You like stories? Yeah. <laughs> and then we'll do a meditation and finish it for today. Um, <coughs> this is a story, it is actually a poem of uh, Rabindranath Tagore. And Rabindranath Tagore was the first uh, non-Western Nobel prize winner for le literature and uh, from Bengal in India and he is very known for uh, for his deep thinking and writing and one of his poems in that book that won the Nobel Prize is called the the beggar and the king so there was a beggar and he was begging from door to door in the village. 
<coughs> and one day on the horizon is this golden light that is approaching the village. And his heart starts to pound a little faster, thinking, wow, something special is going to happen today. No, maybe my begging life <laughs> is going to finish. <laughs> so this golden light comes closer to the village, and it is a golden carriage. And on the carriage is the king of kings, God himself sitting there. So this beggar now really excited. And the carriage turns into the street where the beggar is begging. And he sees the king of kings sitting on the chariot and he thinks, my days of poverty are over. So the golden carriot, chariot uh, stops in front of the beggar and the king of kings comes out of the carriage smiling and the beggar ready with his list <laughs> what to ask. <laughs> But to his surprise, the king of kings stretches out his hand and says, what do you have to give to me? And this poor beggar, <laughs> went, uh, um, surprised, God, and he's asking me, what is this? Doesn't he know I'm a beggar? I don't have anything. But he can't say no. So he goes into his pocket and he tries to find the smallest of smallest of smallest of grain. He takes it out and he puts it in the hand of the king of kings, who smiles at him, thank you, turns around, gets on the chariot, and off he goes, leaving this poor bag <laughs> with <laughs> But what can he do? So he continues to beg. He uh, goes again to her door in door. And at the end of the day, he comes home with his bag and his uh, pockets full of goods. So he turns it around and he finds some pieces of bread and some greens and some dal and whatever. And amongst all of that, there is a little, 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 little grain of gold, just as small as the grain that he gave to the king of kings. And the last phrase of that poem is, I wished and I wept that I had had the heart to give him my all. And this poem is a nice poem. <laughs> At least I feel so. Because it, it illustrates some of the rules and the dynamics of the game. <coughs> now the, one of the rules is in this life, we don't get what we beg for, but we get what we can give. So you give everything, you get everything go back gold. You give little, you get little gold back. And um, <coughs> to discover this kind of dynamics in life is a very beautiful journey. But to discover the wonder that is you is the first step. Okay. No, of course not. No. Of course not. No. <coughs> Joyce was sharing beautiful thing. A smile is sometimes even much more precious than anything physical that you can give. But it is not that, it also applies to the physical. <coughs> I 
the wonder that is you and the gift that is you. We have lost perspective on that. And we've become trapped and then we even get so entrapped in these negative feelings or limited feelings and thoughts about ourselves. And meditation is to say, okay, fine, but now I want to explore, discover something else. Want to say anything? <coughs> Final thoughts? Okay, then before we start with the uh, closing meditation, a um, few things, um, household things, <laughs> maybe. If you have interest to continue, there are follow-up uh, courses and activities possible. Some have already approached and asked. There is what we call the Raj Yoga Foundation course, which is eight sessions where we go a bit more in depth of the knowledge part of uh, behind this. And so you continue with meditation and there will also be meditation, but in this course the emphasis was on meditation and not so much on the, the, the knowledge part behind it. And uh, this Monday occasion, um, coincidence, although there is no coincidence. <laughs> One is starting at six in the evening. So if you would want to join that, you can. It is eight Mondays in a row. Um, but there are other activities of the center. So if you want to just pick up the flyer and 7.45. Eight Mondays, yeah, yeah, every Monday. Um, <coughs> you can just pick up the flyer on the desk and see the other activities that are there. You're most welcome to join any of those activities anytime. And the center is open, uh, is opening hours, weekdays, and uh, you can uh, always come to sit in the meditation room um, if you would want to have some time to experiment with that also. Another thing that is possible on our website and on our Facebook page, there are recordings of, of the, the lectures from the past and some meditation and meditation videos are available. So if you would want to watch and listen to that, you can always go and check that out. And there is also a project that is in a tryout phase. It's called Inner Discovery. And it is uh, an online meditation course, you could say. It is uh, uh, run from the UK. And if you want to sign up for that, register for that, you could do that. And then every other day you get in your email a short meditation with little explanation and a tip. And that goes on for uh, three weeks. So that is also one way to kind of get some new topics, new ideas and experimentation going on. It is in the tryout phase, but it is still very useful to listen to that. So that is another way that you could uh, journey on, on your <laughs> journey. Um, the final thing I wanted to say is that we have, the Brahma Kumaris has a big retreat center upstate New York in the Catskill Mountains. And from April to November, we have weekend retreats on different topics uh, for different uh, professional backgrounds, but also uh, different interests. Uh, and it is called Peace Village. Um, 
So from April onwards, there are weekend retreats. So you could also choose to go and uh, have that experience there. Um, it is like the activities in the center, the lessons and the wisdom is free of charge. You know, we work with voluntary donations. And in the retreat place, we ask for a contribution for your lodging and your food. But the knowledge is free. The teachings are free. But even the contribution is still voluntary. <laughs> it is not that someone stands by the door. <laughs> um, so that is another way you can explore and journey on. Yes. OK. Then we will close with final meditation. Maybe you should stretch a little bit first. Just do like this. Okay, then I'll put on the new, the last meditation.